Hey, Steve. Dieter Kurtenbach, San Jose Mercury News. Uh, now that Steph has gone off, can you uh, admit to feeling nervous at all in the first half there when he was missing a bunch of shots? Not, not, not really. Uh, honestly, um, we've seen this so many times. You know, with Steph, um, he uh, all it takes is one. And uh, I thought he was pressing a little bit early, but um, I was never concerned. This guy's a two-time MVP, and he bounces back from bad games as well as anybody I've ever seen, so didn't surprise me. Uh, Mark Medina Bayer, group, News Group. Steve, what do you think helped uh, open the game up in the third quarter? Uh, excuse me? What do you think help, helped open up the game? Uh, the tonight quarter? was just all about defense and taking care of the ball. That's, um, that's, a, that's it. Um, when we defend like that and we take care of it, um, then we're not giving anything easy and we're making them earn every point. Um, that's, that's what this is all about. If we, if we can defend at that level and protect the ball, we're generally going to be in good shape. Steve Logan Murdoch of the Bay Area News Group right here. Um, there was a stretch in the first quarter where Kevon Looney, he – he blocked him by Mute on one possession and then they played great defense on um, Eric Gordon on the next possession and it kind of made a free fall on that run. What has he been for you guys in this series and what has he been for you guys all season? Well, Loon is a good matchup uh, in this series because of all the ISOs, because of the one-on-one -on -one play. Uh, you need bigs who can switch out and, and uh, cover Chris and James. They're so tough to handle and um, Loon's really good at that. So he's gotten better and better all season and um, – you know, we're thrilled with how he's played, thrilled with how Nick Young has played defensively, staying in front. That's what this series is, is about for us, is, you know, how well can we defend without fouling? Um, they make it really hard on you with all their shooting and their one-on-one -on -one play. But um, we've had a lot of guys step up and uh, play good defense, and I thought Loon, Loon was great tonight. Steve, back to me. Um... Curious. You get two? You, yeah, like there's I know. this whole room, and you get two. They got to raise their hands faster. Raymond, um, did you okay that? I think he's it's a twenty-five hundred dollars fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to my editors. Um, you talk so much about force going into this game. What is Andre Iguodala's role when it comes to force? And uh, he looked like he came up a little bit with something tweaked in his leg in the fourth quarter. Is he okay there? Yeah, I think he's okay. He got banged on the knee. Uh, I think it was like a knee on knee type thing. He said he'll be all right, but. Um, you know, when we're right, uh, when we're playing how we are supposed to play, Andre's right in the middle of it. It's defense and it's being smart, making good decisions. And uh, Andre is one of the guys who um, seems to set the tone for that for us. And I thought uh, he did a great job of that tonight. Hey, Steve, Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Uh, Rockets were taking it right at Steph again from the start. And before his shot was falling, he was driving to the basket pretty well. I know everyone's wants to talk about his pretty shot, but on a night like tonight, how important is his toughness? Well, he's, uh, he's underrated. Steph is underrated for uh, the, the toughness factor, but you don't become a two-time MVP just by shooting a bunch of threes. You know, he's, uh, he's got unbelievable uh, stamina and uh, physical toughness, mental toughness. You know, for four days, everybody's been talking about him and um, – what what he did tonight didn't surprise any of us because that's, that's just who he is. He's got unbelievable character and great talent, and it always rises when it needs to. Tim Kawakami, Athletics. Steve, looked like maybe you were trying a little different defensive strategy to play the pick and roll early, and you maybe scrapped it after a few possessions. That would happen. Were you looking to hedge a little bit more in the pick and roll, and did you just kind of go play it straight up after that? Uh, no, we, we actually didn't change anything. Uh, to start the game, but they hurt us a couple of times. They made a couple of nice plays getting the ball into the paint. Capella got a couple of lobs. So we took a timeout just to um, sort of clarify what our defensive strategy was. But we didn't, we didn't really make a lot of changes. We tweaked a few things here and there. But for the most part, uh, you know, we're playing the same way. They're playing the same way. We just, uh, you know, we played, played a lot better, obviously, tonight. Hi, Steve. Janie McCauley from AP. What... Um the way you guys were able to defend and then get out and transition, how, how did that work exactly how you, know, you guys were hoping to get that game Yeah, well, going? that's always the key for us. When we defend, um, then we can get out and run. Uh, Houston's a very good defensive team, um, and they have made it tough on us. Um, they're doing a lot of good things, but if we can get stops, we know we can get out and transition and get much better shots. So 
that's that's the whole key is getting stops and not fouling, not reaching, not letting the game stop and let them get to the foul line and uh, keep things going and keep the pressure on. Mark Spears, ESPN. Steve, what was the key to Steph's improvement defensively this game and uh, how quickly do you think or what did you think he learned from the previous game defensively? I, I, I just think that we were so much better as a team defensively tonight uh, that it, it, you know, it may have uh, shown up um, you know, that, that Steph played better, but it was really everybody. And when the whole team plays well defensively, each individual is going to look like he played better too. Um, Steph's been battling this whole series with all these guys coming off and trying to take him off the dribble. and um, It's a lot of work, but he's, he's, he's standing up really well. Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve, I mean, obviously 17 rebounds speaks for itself, but what else did you see from Draymond, particularly on the defensive end tonight? Because it looked like he was in the middle of a lot of things. Once oh, my again. gosh, Draymond, um, you know, there's just there's nobody like him, honestly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know another player who is like Draymond uh, in, in this league. His ability to impact the game in so many ways defensively, um, getting out on the – Harden and Paul and, and switching and then rebounding and staying in Capella's legs and trying to knock the ball away on the lobs and, you know, protect the rim without fouling. Uh, Draymond is uh, he's just a tremendous defender, and I thought his performance tonight was uh, was unreal. Coach Kerr, Tony, Tony Harvey, Sacramento Observer. Uh, the Warriors did it tonight. They eclipsed uh, the Bulls' record at home, 15, 16 straight consecutive wins. Could you comment on, you know, a feat like that? Uh, we're we're in the middle of a, a hell of a run, obviously. And we got great great players who are committed, and um, they take a lot of pride in protecting our home floor. And um, so I'm I'm really proud of them. I'm just I'm proud of what they've been able to accomplish the last few years. But um, make no mistake about it, Game Four will be incredibly difficult. Um, we know what's coming, and so we're not paying attention to any of that stuff. Uh, you can ask Raymond for all the stats and all the records and everything else, but we got to we got to be ready for the force that's coming from them in game 4. Mint Artspander, artspander.com and other websites. You I was going to ask you I'm going to artspander.com when I get home. I can't wait. Um, I was going to ask you about game four. Coaches don't like to say this is a must win or this game is bigger and yet you certainly don't want to go back there even holding a 3-1 lead gives you a great advantage. So how, how big is game four? It's a huge game. Uh, it's, it's kind of the swing game of the series. And, um, you know, we're right where we want to be, but we're not uh, naive enough to think that uh, what happened tonight is an indication of what will happen uh, in a couple of days. So um, we've got to be prepared and ready for everything they're bringing and uh, see what we can do. Steve, uh, Dan, like LA Times, you said, I think, earlier this week that Steph Curry and Oracle Arena is such a, a, a good combination. Why do you think that is, and, and what does it do to the rest of the guys on the court when he kind of starts to go and, and the crowd comes yeah, along the way Well, I think most teams play better at home. I mean, I think that's documented. But with our team, the way we play and what we rely on uh, with Steph, he seems to feed off the energy of the crowd. And I thought you saw that tonight. You know, everybody was trying to will him early to, to making one of those threes. He was missing. And then, you know, once the dam broke in the third quarter, um, you know, the fans are they're, uh, they're just so happy when Steph scores. I mean, there's just this synergy between the fans and Steph. And um, it's fun to be a part of and fun to, fun to experience.